Leviticus chapter 14. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, This shall be the ritual for the leprous person at the time of his cleansing. He shall be brought to the priest. The priest shall go out of the camp and the priest shall make an examination. If the disease is healed in the leprous person, the priest shall command that two living, clean birds and cedar wood and crimson yarn and hyssop be brought for the one who is to be cleansed. The priest shall command that one of the birds be slaughtered over fresh water in an earthen vessel. He shall take the living bird with the cedar wood and the crimson yarn and the hyssop and dip them and the living bird in the blood of the bird that was slaughtered over the fresh water. He shall sprinkle it seven times upon the one who is to be cleansed from the leprous disease. Then he shall pronounce him clean, and he shall let the living bird go into the open field. The one who is to be cleansed shall wash his clothes and shave off all his hair, and bathe himself in water, and he shall be clean. After that he shall come into the camp, but shall live outside his tent seven days. On the seventh day he shall shave all his hair, of his head, beard, eyebrows, he shall shave all his hair. Then he shall wash his clothes and bathe his body in water, and he shall be clean. On the eighth day he shall take two male lambs without blemish, and one ewe lamb in its first year without blemish, and a grain offering of three tenths of an ephah of choice flour mixed with oil, and one log of oil. The priest who cleanses shall set the person to be cleansed along with these things, before the Lord, at the entrance of the tent of meeting. The priest shall take one of the lambs and offer it as a guilt offering along with the log of oil and raise them as an elevation offering before the Lord. He shall slaughter the lamb in the place where the sin offering and the burnt offering are slaughtered in the holy place. For the guilt offering, like the sin offering, belongs to the priest. It is most holy. The priest shall take some of the blood of the guilt offering and put it on the lobe of the right ear of, of one to be cleansed, and on the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of the right foot. The priest shall take some of the log of oil and pour it into the palm of his own left hand, and dip his right finger in the oil that is in his left hand, and sprinkle some oil with his finger seven times before the Lord. Some of the oil that remains in his hand the priest shall put on the lobe of the right ear of the one to be cleansed, and on the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of the right foot, on top of the blood of the guilt offering. The rest of the oil that is in the priest's hand he shall put on the head of the one to be cleansed. Then the priest shall make atonement on his behalf before the Lord. The priest shall offer the sin offering to make atonement for the one to be cleansed from his uncleanness. Afterwards he shall slaughter the burnt offering. And the priest shall offer the burnt offering and grain offering on the altar. Thus the priest shall make atonement on his behalf, and he shall be clean. But if he is poor and cannot afford much, he shall take one male lamb for a guilt offering to be elevated, to make atonement on his behalf, and one tenth of an ephah of choice flour mixed with oil for the grain offering, and a log of oil. Also two turtle doves or two pigeons such as he can afford, one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. On the eighth day, he shall bring them for his cleansing to the priest, to the entrance of the tent of meeting before the Lord. And the priest shall take the lamb of the guilt offering and the log of oil, and the priest shall raise them as an elevation offering before the Lord. The priest shall slaughter the lamb of the guilt offering and shall take some of the blood of the guilt offering and put it on the lobe of the, of the right ear of the one to be cleansed and on the thumb of the right hand and on the big toe of the right foot. The priest shall pour some of the oil into the palm of his own left hand, and shall sprinkle with his right finger some of the oil that is in his left hand seven times before the Lord. The priest shall put some of the oil that is in his hand on the lobe of the right ear of the one to be cleansed, and on the thumb of the right hand, and the big toe of the right foot, where the blood of the guilt offering was placed. The rest of the oil that is in the priest's hand he shall put on the head of the one to be cleansed, to make atonement on his behalf before the Lord. And he shall offer of the turtle doves or pigeons, such as he can afford, one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering, along with a grain offering, 
and the priest shall make atonement before the Lord on behalf of the one being cleansed. This is the ritual for the one who has leprous disease, who cannot afford the offerings for his cleansing. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When you come into the land of Canaan, which I give you for a possession, and I put a leprous disease in a house in the land of your possession, the owner of the house shall come and tell the priest, saying, There seems to me to be some sort of disease in my house. The priest shall command that they empty the house before the priest goes to examine the disease, or all that is in the house will become unclean. And afterward the priest shall go in to inspect the house. He shall examine the disease, if the disease is in the walls of the house with greenish or reddish spots, and if it appears to be deeper than the surface, the priest shall go outside the door of the house and shut up the house seven days. The priest shall come again on the seventh day and make an inspection. If the disease has spread in the walls of the house, the priest shall command that the stones in which the disease appears to be taken out and thrown into an unclean place outside the city. He shall have the inside of the house scraped thoroughly and the plaster that is scraped off shall be dumped in an unclean place outside the city. They shall take other stones and put them in the place of those stones and take other plaster and plaster the house. If the disease breaks out again in the house after he has taken out the stones and scraped the house and plastered it, the priest shall go and make inspection. If the disease has spread in the house, it is a spreading leprous disease in the house. It is unclean. He shall have the house torn down, its stones and timber and all the plaster of the house, and taken outside the city to an unclean place. All who enter the house while it is shut up shall be unclean until the evening, and all who sleep in the house shall wash their clothes, and all who eat in the house shall wash their clothes. If the priest comes and makes an inspection, and the disease has not spread in the house after the house was plastered, the priest shall pronounce the house clean. The disease is healed. For the cleansing of the house, he shall take two birds with cedar wood and crimson yarn and hyssop, and shall slaughter one of the birds over fresh water in an earthen vessel, and shall take the cedar wood and the hyssop and the crimson yarn, along with the living bird, and dip them in the blood of the slaughtered bird and the fresh water, and sprinkle the house seven times. Thus he shall cleanse the house with the blood of the bird, and with the fresh water, and with the living bird, and with the cedar wood and hyssop and crimson yarn. And he shall let the living bird go out of the city into the open field. So he shall make atonement for the house, and it shall be clean. This is the ritual for any leprous disease. For an itch, for leprous diseases in clothing and houses, and for a swelling or an eruption or a spot, to determine whether it is unclean and when it is clean. This is the ritual for leprous diseases. Leviticus chapter 15 The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, When any man has a discharge from his member, his discharge makes him ceremonially unclean. The uncleanness of his discharge is this. Whether his member flows with his discharge or his member is stopped from discharging, it is uncleanness for him. Every bed on which the one with the discharge lies shall be unclean. Everything on which he sits shall be unclean. Anyone who touches his bed shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until the evening. All who sit on anything on which the one with the discharge has sat shall wash their clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until the evening. All who touch the body of the one with the discharge shall wash their clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until the evening. If the one with the discharge spits on persons who are clean, then they shall wash their clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until the evening. Any saddle on which the one with the discharge rides shall be unclean. All who touch anything that was under him shall be unclean until the evening. And all who carry such a thing shall wash their clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until the evening. All those whom the one with the discharge touches without his having rinsed his hands in water shall wash their clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until the evening. Any earthen vessel that the one with the discharge touches shall be broken 
and every vessel of wood shall be rinsed in water. When the one with a discharge is cleansed of his discharge, he shall count seven days for his cleansing. He shall wash his clothes and bathe his body in fresh water, and he shall be clean. On the eighth day he shall take two turtle doves or two pigeons and come before the Lord to the entrance of the tent of meeting and give them to the priest. The priest shall offer them, one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering, and the priest shall make atonement on his behalf before the Lord for his discharge. If a man has an omission of semen, he shall bathe his whole body in water and be unclean until the evening. Everything made of cloth or skin on which the semen falls shall be washed with water and be unclean until the evening. If a man lies with a woman and has an omission of semen, both of them shall bathe in water and be unclean until the evening. When a woman has a discharge of blood that is her regular discharge from her body, she shall be in her impurity for seven days, and whoever touches her shall be unclean until the evening. Everything upon which she lies during her impurity shall be unclean. Everything also upon which she sits shall be unclean. Whoever touches her bed shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until the evening. Whoever touches anything upon which she sits shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until the evening. Whether it is the bed or anything upon which she sits, when he touches it, he shall be unclean until the evening. If any man lies with her and her impurity falls on him, he shall be unclean seven days and every bed on which he lies shall be unclean. If a woman has a discharge of blood for many days, not at the time of her impurity, or if she has a discharge beyond the time of her impurity, all the days of the discharge she shall continue in uncleanness, as in the days of her impurity she shall be unclean. Every bed on which she lies during all the days of her discharge shall be treated as the bed of her impurity, and everything on which she sits shall be unclean, as in the uncleanness of her impurity. Whoever touches these things shall be unclean and shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until the evening. If she is cleansed of her discharge, she shall count seven days and after that she shall be clean. On the eighth day, she shall take two turtle doves or two pigeons and bring them to the priest at the entrance of the tent of meeting. The priest shall offer one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering and the priest shall make atonement on her behalf before the Lord for her unclean discharge. Thus you shall keep the people of Israel separate from their uncleanness, so that they do not die in their uncleanness by defiling my tabernacle that is in their midst. This is the ritual for those who have a discharge, for him who has an omission of semen, becoming unclean thereby, for her who is in the infirmity of her period, for anyone, male or female, who has a discharge, and for the man who lies with a woman, who is unclean. Take care. God bless. I'll see you next time.